another height. Give me a lot of my assignment if it's mountain, help me climb it. Uh, uh, elevate uh, my life, take me to another height. Cause the evils want me out and want me down. Oh, that's all the applause I get, god damn! That's all the applause I get? <laughs> man, like my man said, my name is Rob Coleman, and that's Rob Coleman, because when I was growing up, the only famous Coleman was Gary Coleman, right? <laughs> and I'm quite sure a few of you guys are in here like, that's not the kid from Different Strokes? Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> right? <laughs> Growing up with that name, man, Rob Coleman was crazy. Because every time I got introduced to somebody, they would be like, like Gary Coleman? And I was like, no, no, not at all. What you talking about, Willis? They throwing catchphrases at me. They singing a song and shit. Now a world don't move to the beat of just one drum. I'm like, no, don't do that. I'm Rob Coleman, not Gary Coleman, right? And I found out that even though that was 30 years ago, 40 years ago, the curse still exists. The most famous actress in Hollywood, or one of the hottest actresses in Hollywood right now, is Zendaya. You know what her last name is? Coleman. <laughs> and I have no doubt the reason that she doesn't use it is because in an audition or some movie role she was out for, she was like, my name is Zendaya Coleman. And they was like, <gasps> like Gary Coleman. <laughs> Now the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. She was probably like, I don't even know who the fuck that is. <laughs> Did I get the part or not? You know, and she got this great name, Zendaya. It's exotic, you know, it's crazy, right? Like, it don't even sound like the name of a person. It sounds like a country in Africa, right? Like, are you going to Uganda? No, I'm going to Zendaya. We are going to look for unicorns, gold, and rainbows, right? It sounds like a South American dessert. Like, are you getting the Orozco Pollo? No, I'm getting the Zendeja. It sounds delicious, right? It sounds like what they gonna call Earth 2 when we finish fucking this planet up, right? Are you going to Earth 1? No, I'm going to Earth 2, Zendeja. <laughs> right? It's a great name, right? Robert is not a great front sounding first name. You Robert? It's not great, man, when you grew up in the hood. <laughs> I grew up in the hood, man. I can't go around <laughs> like saying, you know, you need to have a list of references of the tough dudes you know, right? Who you know? Man, back up off me, man. I know Bones, I know Buzzy, I know Mook, I know everybody. I know Robert. <laughs> that don't sound right, it don't hit the ears the same, right? They call him Bob. <laughs> no, it don't, it's not tough at all. I did have a cool nickname though. My family nickname was Duke. Like everybody in my neighborhood and my family used to call me Duke. Like, hey, what's up, Duke? How you doing, Duke? I'd be like, yeah, hey, what's up, what's up? Right? I thought that was a cool nickname. But then I asked my family, where did that nickname come from? They was like, oh yeah, when you were little, you used to shit on yourself a lot. So uh, we called you little Duke Duke. We called you little Dookie. <laughs> when you grew up, it just kind of stuck. <laughs> Everybody call me Duke, I'm like, fuck out of here. But you gotta feel good about yourself, right? You can't walk around like thinking about yourself. You gotta feel good about yourself, no matter how you look, no matter, you just gotta feel good about yourself. Don't let nobody shame you or anything like that. Like my doctor always tells me, Rob, you need to lose a couple of pounds. You need to lose some weight. You flirting with diabetes. That's what he told me, you flirting with diabetes. How do you flirt with diabetes? Like, hey diabetes, how you doing? I see you over here with this pound cake and Kool-Aid. <laughs> Who's your friend, heart disease? No, that's not what I'm doing. I'm not flirting with diabetes. And he's always telling me the shit I need to do. You need to stop eating bread. You need to stop eating sugar. And I'm like, I need, you know what I need is a fat doctor. That's what I need. <laughs> so every time he tell me you need to lose a couple of pounds, I'd be like, you do too, fat bastard. <laughs> You wanna come to the gym? You wanna come to the gym? <laughs> I did join a gym though, right? I joined Planet Fitness. And let me tell you guys, if there's anybody on this planet that don't care about your fitness, it's the people at Planet Fitness. <laughs> I have been on pizza night and bagel day. <laughs> they don't give a shit at Planet Fitness, right? And I hate working out, man, because all the guys, what is it about muscles on young dudes that give them Tourette's, right? Every young dude is walking around like, ah! Yeah, ha, give 
it to me. Now, more weight. Uh, put it on there. Uh, I got this. Uh, let's lift it. <laughs> right? <laughs> ah, uh, more. Let's go. Uh, don't touch it. Don't touch it. <laughs> right? What is it, man? And all the ladies at the gym, I don't know what it is with y'all. Every lady at the gym is in this mode, right? Every lady at the gym is doing squats, right? Because women with a little ass want a big ass. Women with a big ass want a bigger ass for some reason. So everybody is in this mode. And everybody is taking pictures of the shit. What is this, ladies? What the hell is this? <laughs> Every lady is at the gym is in this, in this, you know, taking pictures. Chicka, 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 chicka. This lady took so many pictures of her ass, I took one too. Chicka. <laughs> She said, did you take a picture of my ass? I said, I absolutely did. Look at this angle I got, it's perfect. <laughs> send me your contacts, I'll send it to you, right? You can't stand it, man. So you gotta feel good about yourself, you know what I mean? Can't let nobody shame you. The only thing that make me kinda wanna lose some weight is shopping for clothes. <laughs> shopping for clothes. Cause I gotta go to the big and tall section. And y'all see the situation up here. I'm not tall. So to me, it's like a goddamn big section. <laughs> and you always know you found it in the store because it's always a big ass picture of Shaquille O'Neal. Like, you found it. Here it is right here. Come get your big ass a shirt, right? <laughs> I can't buy Shaquille O'Neal's shirt. It looked like a dress on me, you know? And every big and tall section in every store is exactly the same. A bunch of bullshit. A bunch of cloth that they just sewed buttons on and was like, put it over there. Maybe some fat motherfuckers will buy it, right? <laughs> you ever been to the big and tall section at Burlington? That shit is like an eclectic shirt, a list of shirts that they just found somewhere. It's tank tops and polos and shit don't match. It got Japanese letters and old ass cartoon characters like Woody Woodpecker and Popeye on them and shit. I bought one <laughs> that had Popeye on it with tattoos holding a can of spinach and some money talking about he's strong to the spinach because he eats his spinach. I hated that goddamn shirt, so I bought three. <laughs> <laughs> I hate shopping in the big and tall section, man. One thing, though, you do have to listen to your doctor for some shit, though, right? Like, my doctor, and man, if you're over 50, any man over 50, make a little noise for me. Okay, yeah, man, if you're over 50, listen to me. Go, go to the goddamn doctor. I know it's embarrassing. The last appointment I went on, they bent me over the table, gave me the two greasy fingers. You know, it was embarrassing. I was bent over the table like, what kind of a dentist office is this? <laughs> this ain't the kind of drilling I came in here for, this is some bullshit. I can't recommend y'all to nobody. <laughs> but go, women go. Women go to the doctor all the goddamn time. They got a doctor for every body part. They got a breast doctor, a foot doctor, a hoo-hoo doctor. They got a doctor literally for every body part, <laughs> right? And when they go to their appointments, this is how I know women are stronger than men. Their appointments are way worse than ours, guys. They got, when they go to their breast appointment, I don't know what this machine is called, but it need to have George Foreman in front of it, right? <laughs> because they put their breasts in this thing and they squash it down and everything. It had to be a man that invented that shit, right? Right? <laughs> it's some crazy shit. I don't know why they just don't have a dude in there like, yeah, there's a lump. <laughs> you know, like when you apply for that job, <laughs> yeah, there's a lump. <laughs> and don't go on a hoo-hoo appointment with them. You know what I'm saying? That's, that shit is really strange. Fellas, they got this bed when they go in there that have these leg holders on the side of them. Fellas, if you go on your doctor's appointment and you see this bed, change your shit to another day. Because when you put your legs in these leg holders, I don't care if you Democrat or Republican, all your rights are gone. <laughs> you don't have the right to do shit, but just lay there. And the doctor came in, right? I'm on an appointment with my girl. The doctor came in, and he pulled out this tool, this um, transformer. It, it was, I don't know what it's called. It, what, what is it, the spe speculum? Spatulum? Spatulum? Close enough? OK. I don't know what they call it, but they need to call it the ego shrinker. Because they put this thing in your woman, everything get this big, your ego get this big. <laughs> like, wow, I didn't know it did that. <laughs> and you can see everything, right? You like, ooh, an old movie ticket, there's a penny in there, you see an old G.I. Joe man, you're like, ah, get the, <laughs> right? You can see all this shit. But for some reason, the doctor can't. So they grab this big ass light 
and bring it down and shine it in your woman's hoo-ha. I didn't know they went through this, so I asked my girl, are you okay, are you all right? She said, I'm fine, and light was coming out of her mouth. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> what do women have to go through? But men go. The only doctor we go to on a regular basis, man, is the emergency room, <laughs> right? <laughs> I've seen walk, guys walk into an emergency room with a leg growing out their back. <laughs> like, how long has this been going on? Since December of 2015, right? <laughs> no, man, go, go to the doctor, man. Listen to him, too. My doctor made me get the COVID shot because I asked him, I was like, who is it killing? He said, look in the mirror. <laughs> it's killing your fat ass, right? And since I'm highly allergic to death, I went ahead and got it. <laughs> But I didn't want to argue with people, right? Like for years during COVID, we argued with each other. I, I was sick of that shit. I didn't want to argue with people no more. I argued with a guy for 15 minutes in a grocery store because he was like, I ain't getting that shot because I don't know what's in it. I don't know what's in it. This dude had a case of mystery flavor Mountain Dew in his cart. I said, sir, you don't know what's in that. <laughs> you know, so I got tired of arguing with people. People wasn't following the rules. Do we have one simple rule? If you sick, stay home, right? But motherfuckers was coming out coughing, uh, <coughs> if you sick, stay home, how hard was that to do? So we had all of these variants, the Omicron, the Decepticon, the Shakacon, the Raphacon, like all of these different variants, right? Then they came out with the monkey one. Remember the monkey one? I had a friend of mine that caught that shit. I said, dude, you got that monkey shit. You got that monkey shit. You know what he told me? He was like, who, 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 who you think you talking to? I said, you do. Take your monkey ass home and eat this banana and lay down. You sick. Because it was stress, man. We went through two and a half years of being on punishment. <laughs> Couldn't go outside and play. That shit was stress. That's the whole reason Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. He was sitting at home for two and a half years with them weird kids and his bald head wife, putting all his business on the internet. He heard Chris Rock say that dumbass joke. All he saw was August Alcina. <laughs> Will Smith slapped the shit out of me. Yes, he did. We was been sitting at home for two and a half years, Chris. If you ain't want to slap the shit out of somebody, something's wrong with you. <laughs> right? We were stressed. You know, that shit happened to me. You know, I was on Will Smith's side because the shit happened to me. I was out with my wife. This dude started hitting on my wife, so I smacked the shit out of him. Let me explain what happened. We was at church and, um... <laughs> no, let me finish. We was at church. This dude started hitting on my wife. I smacked the shit out of him, right? Everybody was like, oh no, why you do the pastor like that? <laughs> he was just trying to give her communion. <laughs> I said, no, nah, fuck that. Nobody put nothing in my wife's mouth but me. <laughs> and it ain't our anniversary yet. <laughs> so I, I was feeling Will Smith, man. You know, we was all stressed. We watched everything on Netflix. We watched Tiger King and Squid Games and all this bullshit. I watched so much shit on Netflix, I started coming up with my own ideas for movies. Like, what if Mike Tyson made movies? But not just any movies, vampire movies. Because how funny would it be to hear Mike Tyson say this, try to say Dracula for an hour and a half? Right? He'd be like, oh my God, he's Dracula. He's Dracula? Dracula. Dracula. Oh my God, I was He's from Transylvania, right? Oh my God, it's the guy from Transylvania? From Transylvania? From Transylvania? It's the guy that bite people. No, Mike, you are the guy that bite people. <laughs> Sit your ass down. I wasn't telling that to his face, though. <laughs> it was stress, man. We can't deal with that shit. Especially living in Cleveland, we Browns fans. We have enough stress. <laughs> right? Have we got some Browns fans in here? Yeah. All right, yeah. let's go. How about them Steelers? <laughs> Fuck them Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> My goddamn special. Fuck Steelers. You get that on tape? <laughs> we Browns fans, though, but I do feel like being a Browns fan needs to be diagnosed as a psychotic condition, right? Yeah. We like the motherfuckers that cut themselves, right? <laughs> right? Say no kissed it or some shit like that. Cause you know, I feel like being me being a Browns fan is like the only dude in high school that liked the ugly girl. Cause all your friends be like, why do you like her ugly ass? You be like, she's special. She gonna look better next year, watch. And every year that same ugly ass girl comes skipping down the hallway. 
Oh, it's gonna look better next year. That's what we do, man, as Browns fans. And I don't care if they talk or if they come looking for me, what they gonna do? I'll just disguise myself as an end zone. They'll never find me. <laughs> <laughs> we live in Cleveland, man. I love Cleveland, man. Cleveland is blue collar, man. We hard working. You know, people are happy even if they got a bad job. You know, my last job sucked because I worked with a bunch of dicks. But that's what I get for filling out a job application at a dildo factory, right? <laughs> But it wasn't that bad, though. I met a lot of cool people. Like, this one time, I was about to be, you know, uh, have to do some overtime because it was getting late, and I knocked over a box, and dicks was everywhere, man. And I was like, fuck, I got to clean this up. And it's like five minutes left before I got to punch out. I was like, damn, I'm going to have to stay late. But this gay guy came over and helped me pick them all up, man. And we ended up getting out of there on time. And this gay guy with a bag of dicks was happier than a... <laughs> Well, I guess that was the best day of his life. <laughs> My daughter's like, Dad, you need to stop telling that joke. You need to stay woke. I said, girl, I got sleep apnea. I can't stay woke. Man. It's hard. <laughs> but we deal with it, though, man. I do meet people that's happy with bad jobs. I met this dude that was a toilet cleaner, man. He was all in front of it, man. He was all in back of it. He got all inside of it. He was like, how was that? I was like, fine, but can I get off of it first next time? God damn. You doing your job too well. <laughs> we happy though, man. Bad credit. Broke. My credit's so bad, the last dude that ran my credit fucked his credit up too. <laughs> and you find out the hard way, right? I went in the bank to try to get one of them PPP loans. I couldn't even get one of those, and all you had to do was have a heartbeat. <laughs> they turned me down. I was in there sounding like Little John the Rapper. I was turned down for what? Turned down for what? <laughs> My student loans? Okay. <laughs> but I found out the secret, though, man. I saw this old white dude get turned down for a loan, and he went deep into the angry white guy dictionary. He was like, I'm perplexed. I'm flabbergasted. This is preposterous. And he hit the desk. Who can I talk to? They called the branch manager, the regional manager, the district manager, and Gators got a loan. I was like, well, shit. I'm going to try that. The next time I was in the bank, they turned me down. I got up and hit the desk. Boom, this is preposterous. Who can I talk to? She called the security guard, the police, the army. I think the Coast Guard was in there. I did not get that loan. <laughs> but like I said, man, we, we deal with it in Cleveland, man. We deal with not having a lot of money. We deal with being broke. And we have fun. Like, for instance, I went over to my cousin's house last weekend because he was having a housewarming party. He didn't buy a new house. He got his heat cut back on. So <laughs> we went over there to celebrate because the house was getting warm. We was like, hey, the house getting warm. I just hate going over there, man, because he got roaches, you know? Now, let me explain something to you, if you don't know. There's two different types of people that have roaches. There's people that's embarrassed about it. Like, oh, I'm so sorry, my God, I, I'm so embarrassed, that's a roach. And there's people that don't give a shit. <laughs> it's just a roach, sit your ass down, move him out the way. You want something to eat? No, no, I don't want nothing to eat. <laughs> you want a box of cereal? No. <laughs> nah, nope. <laughs> they, don't even, they don't even get embarrassed about it. Got roaches so long that the roaches is fat now. <laughs> they don't even run when you cut the light on. They just walk fast. You cut the light on, the roaches like, oh, shit, he done cut the light on. Let me get my fat ass out of here. <laughs> Every time I go over there, man, I have a can of Raid and a, and a, and a, <laughs> and a BB gun, because I don't know how it's going to go down, you know? I caught this fat roach walking across the kitchen floor. He was carrying a Fruit Loop. <laughs> So I cornered him, I was like, I pulled my can of Raid out. He was like, hey, hey, hey. What you gonna do with that roach spray? I said, I'm gonna spray your fat ass. One got away and got behind the refrigerator on me. So I moved the refrigerator. Why they had his Denzel Washington training day roach back there and a wife beater with a naked roach in the bed. <laughs> he count breadcrumbs and shit. He was like, congratulations, my nigga, you passed. I was like, what? He saw the can of Raid and was like, uh, 
player to player, pimp to pimp. I don't believe you'll spray me, nigga. Hit me, hit me right here, hit me, hit me right here, hit me right here. You can't do it. Now I'm gonna walk over here and I'm gonna lick that Kool-Aid spot and I'm gonna get this cornbread crumb. And you ain't gonna spray no roach in the back. He turned around, I sprayed the shit out of him. He said, oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> King Kong. <laughs> I'm like, calm down, little man. <laughs> but we have fun, man. I shop at uh, thrift stores. Any thrift store shoppers? Yeah, hell yeah. I love the thrift store. The clothes are already broke in. The sweaters already got lint balls. The dress shoes already lean over a little bit. The bed sheets already got piss stains. I mean, it's... <laughs> and I found a gift from the universe last time I was at the thrift store. I found a Walmart employee shirt. Yes. Do you know how much fun it is to walk through a Walmart with an employee shirt on and you're not an employee? Oh, I was tapping over on the employees like, hey, the boss want to see you in the back and he is not happy. <laughs> right? I was in the employee lunchroom eating their lunches. <laughs> Tell Tasha she makes some good meatloaf. They was like, we gonna tell your manager. Tell him then, I don't give a shit. Right? This lady walked up to me with six kids, was pregnant with number seven. She was like, can you tell me where the Pampers are? I said, bitch, you need to be looking for the condoms. And I ran, I ran, I got out of there. I'm just kidding, I just walked fast. <laughs> They caught me though, because I was helping a guy take a 65 inch TV out to his car. The guy was me, but. Uh... <laughs> and I'm broke, man. I do broke shit. I think God don't want me to have money because I'm a comedian. I think God know I would do stupid shit with money. Like I'm broke now and I'm already negotiating with a funeral, funeral director to have a jack-in-the-box crank put on the side of my coffin. <laughs> I just think that would be funny as hell for people to have to walk by that during a funeral. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> right? <laughs> I would do stupid shit. If I was a billionaire, I already know I would do stupid shit. Remember last year, all them billionaires was flying their rockets around the planet, SpaceX and all that shit? Some of them was going to Mars? Mm-mm, not me. If I'm a billionaire, I'm going straight to Uranus. <laughs> and I'm gonna build a rocket ship that look like a finger. <laughs> so every day in the news, y'all gonna see billionaire Rob Coleman tries to put his finger in Uranus. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> I would do stupid shit with my money, I already know. I would open an energy company, but I would only hire members of the Ku Klux Klan but I would call my company Black Power. Just because I think it would be funny for them to explain where they work, right? Hey, Zeke, I heard you got a new job. Where is it that you working? Uh, Black Power. I wouldn't even give them employee badges. I would give them little wristbands they had to hold up to a light to punch in. Black Power. Okay, you can come in. Okay. I would give them employee shirts to say black power on them. No. Hoodies. <laughs> every payday would be my favorite though. Because every, every payday they would have a deduction for city, state, federal, and reparations. <laughs> reparations? The fuck is this bullshit? Wait till you get the 40 acre and a mule deduction. I mean, it's really gonna kick your ass. I'm stupid, man. I already know. If I was a billionaire, I got real into social justice over the uh, pandemic. So if I was a billionaire, I'm a billionaire, right? I'm gonna hire a group of scientists to replace the police taser gun. It don't work. We've all seen videos of people fighting off the taser. Oh, get that taser off of me. Oh. No, we're gonna replace that shit. I'm gonna have scientists invent the orgasm gun. Cause I've seen plenty of dudes fight off tasers. I've never seen a dude fight off an orgasm, right? 
Dude will be fucking up, fighting the cops. Uh, get the fuck off me. Hit him with the old gun, Charlie. Oh. Oh. Okay, all right. Fuck, okay. Don't touch me, don't touch me. Shit, okay. Oh, okay, listen. I'm gonna go to sleep for a minute. But when I wake up, I'm killing all of y'all. <laughs> the only bad thing about it, it will only work on men. You would have to hit a woman with it like five or six times for it to work. <laughs> like, ooh, hit me again. Ooh, almost, that was close. Ooh. Right. <laughs> They'll be coming up missing at the police station all the time. What happened to all the orgasm guns? I don't know, but my wife is happy. <laughs> <laughs> broke, man. I grew up broke. Anybody grew up with a cheap parent? Yeah, I grew up with a cheap single father. My father would take my winter clothes that was too little into the basement around springtime with some scissors and come out a half hour later with my summer clothes. I'm like, Dad, what the fuck I'm gonna do with a short sleeve turtleneck, right? What I'm gonna do with corduroy shorts? I can't play hide and go seat in this bullshit. Zip, zip, zip. <laughs> they know exactly where I'm at. Zip, 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 zip. Can't play hide and go seat in this shit. I came back in mad one time because he had cut some purple ones off. They was all uneven and raggedy. I came back in mad. He was like, boy, what you so mad about? I was like, all oh, my friends keep calling me the Incredible Hawk. <laughs> it was bad, man. My dad, man, used to uh, do shit <laughs> that would embarrass me out of love, you know? Like, he actually kept me out of trouble by accident when I was a kid. He don't even know this. He hung a picture of himself up on our wall of himself in his police officer uniform, right? And when I was a little, all my kids saw that picture. So when they got older and started getting in trouble, they would never call me. Oh, we can't call Rob, his dad Popo, his dad Five O, right? So it kept me out of a lot of trouble growing up. And towards the end of his life, when he started getting sick, I told him, I was like, Dad, listen, you don't even know, man. You kept me out of a lot of trouble by hanging that picture on the wall. And I just want to thank you for your service as a police officer. He said, whoa, wait a minute, boy, what you talking about? I said, for your service as a police officer. He said, boy, ain't no police officer. I said, but what about the picture? He said, that was a goddamn Halloween party. <laughs> you ain't see the Indian and the astronaut next to me? We doing YMCA in the picture. Why you think my arm's like this? <laughs> I ain't know, shit, I ain't know. My dad used to love me and embarrass me at the same time. True story, when I was about 10, 12 years old, I wanted to play Little League Pee Wee football, right? And I couldn't play for the best team, I wasn't good enough. So I had to play for one of the teams that didn't have a lot of money, right? This team had 13 players, but only 11 football helmets. So only the best players got helmets, right? So I didn't get a helmet, and the girl that they let play didn't get a helmet, right? <laughs> so I went home after the first day of practice, my dad was like, hey boy, how was football? I said, it was great. He said, where your helmet at? I said, I ain't get one. He said, you ain't getting no helmet, and now he said something that was so profound, something to this day that still amazes me. To, to that point in my life, I had never heard my dad say anything like this before. My dad looked at me and said, they ain't give you no football helmet. I'll make you a helmet. <laughs> you can make a helmet? I was like, who the fuck is this dude, a wizard, right? How you gonna make a football helmet? He said, stay right here. He left and came back an hour later with an adult-sized football helmet. A big-ass white helmet with one bar going across the front, right? He said, what's the team colors? I said, the helmets are gray. He said, perfect. He had some gray house paint that he had been painting the basement with. He took my helmet out in the backyard, put it on some newspaper, and started painting my shit with a paintbrush. <laughs> He was like, when this coat dry, we're going to put another coat on it, and then you're going to go play some football. <laughs> so the next day, I put this monstrosity on my head, right? I'm walking around looking like a mop. It looked like a, a bucket on a mop, right? <laughs> the coach called me over and was like, Coleman, where the hell you get that helmet? 
I said, my daddy made it. And that shit was wiggling like a... <laughs> He said, put Coleman at running back. So they put me at running back, right? They called Hike and give me the ball. Now, our middle linebacker, Jerome, was one of the hardest hitting kids in the whole Muni League. All I saw was him come around the end and square up with me. And now, I didn't see shit, and I didn't feel shit, but I heard everything. I heard the coaches in unison say, God damn! <laughs> and I heard the kids around me say, is he dead? <laughs> Now, all I could feel is grass and dirt and mud. Like, I can't feel nothing. I can't see anything. They pick me off off the ground and take the helmet off me. Turns out when he hit me, the helmet turned completely around till it was facing backwards, right? They thought he had broke my neck. <laughs> I was like, ha, ha, <laughs> They was like, Coleman, get the fuck out of here. Turn your shit in. Go home. Turn your shit in. I was like, you gonna keep the helmet? He was like, no, you can take that shit because you're getting gray paint all over the other kids. Take this shit home, right? So I walk home and tell my dad, I think I want to try out for basketball. <laughs> so I try out for basketball. Don't make the team. Come home. He's like... What happened? I said, they wouldn't let me get on the basketball court. They wouldn't let you get on the basketball court. I'll make you a basketball court. So as the story goes, he put a basketball court in our backyard. And I used to sit out there for hours and watch the other kids in the neighborhood play on it. I mean, <laughs> it wasn't me. I was horrible at that shit. My dad was the truth, man. He's the whole reason I, I knew I was funny. The very first joke I remember telling was to him. I was like five or six years old, right? And he would take me to department stores. Now, back in the day, young fellas, the Walmart wasn't called Walmart. It was called Sears and Roebuck, <laughs> right? The place where you went to get everything, right? And I was a big toy kid. Like, anytime I saw the toy section, boom, I'm gone. I'm going to see the toy section. I got to see what's in the toy section. So I'm five or six years old. I go over to the toy section. My dad loses me, he don't know where I'm at. He finds me like 15 minutes later. It was like, what the hell are you doing? I said, I want this toy. He said, come on, and I start falling out. Ah, I want the toy, I want the toy. Now at this time, the toy section was right next to the men's section, and the men's section used to have a display of belts on this circular, <laughs> on this circular rack. He started spinning them, because <laughs> he's looking for the perfect belt for this job. He looked like Tiger Woods picking out a golf club. Uh, this is gonna take a number seven. <laughs> He picks a belt off that shit and wears my ass out, right? So I always remember that. The next time we at the department store, I see the toy section. I'm compulsive. Boom, I'm gone. I'm in the toys. A couple of minutes later, I remembered, I got my ass whooped last time for this. So I'm smart. I'm young and I'm stupid, but I'm smart too. I go to the people at the, uh, the desk where you do the announcements. You're like, hey, we have a special going on. I go to one of them dudes, right? And I tell him, my dad is lost. <laughs> so the guy gets on the microphone and says, uh, there is a lost father <laughs> walking around Sears and Robux right now. Your son is looking for you. He's over here at the announcement desk. You want to say something, young man? He gave me the microphone. I said, hey, dad, hear me. Where are you? <laughs> he came walking down the hall, slow, smiling, shaking his head. He was like, so I'm the one lost, huh? <laughs> I said, yeah, you, it got me out of the ass whooping. It got me out of the ass whooping. I was like, cool, being funny can get you out of an ass whooping. <laughs> it didn't work all that <laughs> and all the time in my life, but it worked that time. And that's also the last joke I told him because um, when he was sick later on in life, he had turned the corner when he was in hospice and was unresponsive. Everybody's like, oh, you know, it won't be long now. So I walk into the room and I said, hey, dad, hear me, where are you? And you know, through all of that unresponsiveness, he still smiled. I was like, oh, this joke still works. <laughs> I'm gonna have to keep it. <laughs> so I miss my father and I um, dedicating this special to him, you know? Yeah, thank you guys. I miss that dude, man. Because he used to give me relationship advice. And I tell you, by far, by far, the worst advice I've ever received in my life. The absolute worst, right? When I was dating this girl, 
I told my dad I'm having problems with her. She really mouthy, man, and she keep talking back to me. My dad turned his head to the side and was like, have you put your hands on her? I said, oh, shit. Now, my dad grew up in the 50s and 60s. Like, this wasn't no, like, that was, like, normal for a man, right? Did you put your hands on her? I said, no, but maybe I should try it. The next time we was in the car, she got mouthy with me. So I, boom, gave her a little, no, no, not, not nothing hard, right? Like a little 30, 40%, boom, right? She said, ah, and bent over. She rose back up like the exorcist and shit, like, mm. <laughs> But she was quiet, right? And I'm thinking to myself, oh, shit, this works. Okay. I was confident driving home, right? Yeah, this works. Hell yeah. Do this shit from now on. I park. She jump out the car, run into the apartment. I'm like, fuck, where is she going? I'm like, I don't care. This shit work. I don't care. I get to the apartment, peek my head in. This foot came out of nowhere, this size four and a half, five, and hit me right in the eye, <laughs> toe first. <laughs> I was like, ah, and I went down. And all I felt was tiny fists and feet all over my body. Ah, blah, 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 blah. I thought I was being jumped by one person. She whipped my ass. That's what happened. So of course I had to marry her. <laughs> And I want y'all to give it up for my wife over there, man. Give it up for my wife. She... <laughs> She'll tell you, man, that's a true story. <laughs> and we've been married for 27 years. Y'all ain't got to clap. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, if you're going to marry somebody, man, marry somebody with similar qualities as you. Like me and her, we both real cheap with money. So we had like a really cheap wedding, right? Like, we ain't even get married at a church. We got married at our apartment complex, right? We just set some, you know, chairs up in the apartment, you know? And we had people bring food, right? You ever been to a potluck wedding? Yeah, shit, mine was. Bring a gift and a dish, you know? Shareable with 20 people, <laughs> you know? People was like, you was bragging, Rob. You said you had the finest cake in Cleveland. No, I had a cake from Finest, the grocery store in East Cleveland. There wasn't no good cake. <laughs> My friends were like, did you have a limo? I know you had a limo. Shit, the only limo at my wedding was limonade. <laughs> had nothing expensive, you know. But not every year on our anniversary, I do try to do stuff expensive, right? You know, black wives matter. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> so every year, she's like, take me someplace expensive. I want you to take me someplace expensive. So our last anniversary, I took her to the gas station. I was like, you see this shit? This is... <laughs> Inflation, <laughs> right? <laughs> but we've been married a long time, man. And um, I got married because I was tired of dating, man. Dating was shitty, man. When I was dating, you know, people try to set you up with people they think you would be good with. This dude set me up with this girl, man. He was like, Robert, she perfect for you. She funny. You know, she like the same stupid shit you like. Only thing is, she get a little embarrassed because she got a big mansion. I was like, I don't give a shit. Give me her address. Give me her number. I'll go check her out. So he give me her name, number, and address. I go to her house, and she just got a regular house. And I was like, huh, I thought she had a big mansion. I don't care. I knock on the door. She come to the door. She had a big-ass beard. I was like, he ain't tell me this shit. He said she, oh, she got a big man chin. I didn't, I didn't hear him right. I didn't, put those, I didn't put that together right. So we dated for three months and uh, <laughs> tried it out. It didn't work. <laughs> I hated meeting your girlfriend's ex. That was one of the things, because I'm really self-conscious, and I would be dating a girl, and sometimes we would run into her ex-boyfriend. I was with this girl at Randall Park Mall. We walk in through the food section. This dude came around the corner, 6'2", slim, covered with muscles, right? He see my girl and was like, hey, what's up, little bit? He grabbed her by the ass and picked her up and started swinging her around. I said, no, this dude didn't just pick my girl up and start swinging her around. No, this motherfucker didn't. I said that to myself because he was a big motherfucker, right? <laughs> she said, this is my new boyfriend, Robert. He said, what's up, little man? And picked me up, too. <laughs> I didn't just take it, though. I was kicking my legs and everything. I was like, mm, put me down. <laughs> I want down. Hated dating, man. And I was stupid, man. I would date anybody. I used to fantasize about dating people. I would date just about anybody but Wonder Woman, <laughs> right? Because Wonder Woman, not only is she a six foot two white woman that could bench press trucks, 
She got that magic lasso to make dudes tell the truth. <laughs> and do you really want to date a woman who can make you tell the truth? <laughs> I was so nervous when them Wonder Woman movies came out that they would invent that shit for real. <laughs> Fellas, can you imagine coming home from work late one day? Your woman is on a dining room table with looking like Roy Rogers or some shit. <laughs> Get your ass in here. <laughs> what, what, what's going on? <laughs> what is this? It's a magic lasso. Where was you at tonight? I was at the strip club making it rain. Ah, oh, what is this? It's a magic lasso. How did I really look in that dress last week? Your ass looked like a frozen bag of crinkle crunch french fries. Oh shit, what is this? It's a magic lasso. Do you really want to fuck my sister? I already fucked your sister. Ah, oh, what is this? <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> Had to get married, man. Got two beautiful kids, man. I don't even call them kids no more because they're both in their 20s. People tell you about the terrible twos. They don't tell you about the terrible 20s. <laughs> the terrible twos is like, gimme, gimme, gimme. The, tw the terrible 20s is like, gimme now, right? <laughs> so got a daughter and a son. My daughter is smart, my son is smart, in different ways though, right? Like my son says like smart shit that you really don't catch until you have to think about it, right? Like my son came downstairs one day and was like, dad, I couldn't sleep. I said, what's wrong? He was at people was driving their motorcycles by my window at three o'clock at night. I said, three o'clock at night? There's three o'clock in the afternoon and three o'clock in the morning. There is no three o'clock at night, right? Like it was profound that he, <laughs> that he invented a new time and shit, right? <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I, I was trying to convince him, boot, that's three o'clock in the morning. He was like, but the sun wasn't up. I was like, God damn, you're right. <laughs> that is profound. <laughs> He wanted a dog when he was a kid. So my wife was like, go to the pound and pick him out a dog. I didn't think about this, right? So I took him to the pound and they had all of these dogs. And I, I didn't know which one to pick. They had dogs from the floor to the ceiling. And he was like, dad, what happened to the dogs they don't pick? And I didn't think about it. I was like, oh shit. I said, uh, well, I guess son, they put him to sleep. And he got sad and was like, how they put him to sleep? My daughter was like, they tell him some of daddy's jokes. I was like, you know, you know what? <laughs> but like I said, man, I've been married a long time, man. I will say that marriage has been like really good to me. We've been married, like I said, for 27 years. Um, my wife does get jealous sometimes, but like it's like silly shit. Like we was walking through the mall the other day. We walked past Victoria's Secret. She was like, I saw you looking at them mannequins. <laughs> I said, you think I would cheat on you with a mannequin? <laughs> like, you gonna come home early from work and I'm gonna be like, bitch, hide. And she like. <laughs> bitch, I said, get in the closet, what you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna have a mannequin side, baby. <laughs> be going to their games. Which one is your kid, the one in the outfield? <laughs> I will say though, you know, being married for a long time, man, it does get a little mundane, you know. Sex get a little, you know. When you first get married, I wanted sex like the newspaper. I wanted sex every day. I want the newspaper every day. What's going on? I need the newspaper, right? Then as I got older, I was like, uh, eh, I'll get it on the weekends. <laughs> you know, maybe special occasions. At the age I'm at now, it all comes from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> But I got a way, man, to bring sex back, y'all. Any married couples out there? I got ways to bring it back. I think every four years, ladies, your husband should have to be reelected. Yeah, I think every four years, another dude should run against your husband to be your husband, right? Because, man, we real competitive. We ain't gonna let nobody, you know, come and just take our wife, right? We gonna be like, hey, baby, who I'm up against? Who I'm up against? You up against my ex-boyfriend from high school. He taller than you, he make more money. He the one my mama said I should have married. <laughs> he got a bigger cock than you, <laughs> right? 
You'd be like, where I'm at in the polls? How I'm doing in the polls? You had a 5% approval rating with family? <laughs> a 3% approval rating with coworkers? <laughs> That's when you grab her by the hand and slowly take her in the bedroom with a handful of Viagra and an orgasm gun. <laughs> Have her coming out a half hour later like, four more years! Four more years! <laughs> hey, listen, man. I just want to thank you guys, man, for sharing this moment with me. This has been uh, special um, to have you guys come out. You know, whether or not you know me, whether or not you thought I was Gary Coleman and came out. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys, man. You don't know how much it means for me to be headlining my first weekend and to have you guys share that with me. I'll never forget every face in this room, man. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> my name is Rob Coleman, man. I've been great, and you guys have too. It must not be meant for you But I'ma speak the truth Plant seeds and then I prove Saying that they bought that life But never show the proof You here to play a part And this is really what I do Live that life Them sleepless nights Them scriptures Kept me sane and healed my pain Not niggas Trying to find a medium Only one mediator Jedi in the world Where they love me is Darth Vader, nigga Elevate my life Take me to another height Give me a lot of my assignment